Hello and welcome to another installment of Comparative Reasoning. I'm your host, Cedric Kennedy, and today this is how to view Trump's Dr. Fauci quote tweet. Now, on the phone, can't help but get this fool's tweets. Can't help it, you know. You don't have to follow him, you just get them because, you know, president and all. And so. I look at it and two minutes ago, it's not 17 hours ago like normal, this is two minutes. This phone might be doing a lot better than my last. Actually, it, it is doing better because clearly 15 hour difference in getting a tweet, yeah. He says, they are indeed Dr. Fauci's own words. We have done a phenomenal job according to certain governors. Many people agree. And now come the vaccines and cures long ahead of projections. That's what it says. And let's see. At Ockady Smith, Alan Smith at Ockady Smith. Trump campaign box Tim Murtaugh res responds. These are Dr. Fauci's own words. The video is from a national broadcast television interview with Dr. Fauci was praising the work of the Trump administration. The words spoken are accurate and directly from Dr. Fauci's mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's all about context. But you need to listen to the true context. When Trump cites Dr. Fauci, all he's trying to do is say, hey, haven't you all, you know, the majority of people now going with social media saying, hey, Dr. Fauci is credible. He's science. He is great. He's been he's come out against me. But think about it. If he's agreeing with me, then you should agree with me. Great school manipulation. And. You'll fixate on Dr. Fauci because that's the buzz name now, the buzz word, the buzz term. It's the thing that's on the lips, the tongue, the, the forefront of your mind. So you go with that. But you got to look past that. You got to read past that. And that's not between the lines. You have to literally keep reading to determine what you need to trust and not trust. It's a movie called open range you want to quote something it says you can know a man's intentions if you just listen to him i think that's how it goes or you know a man will make his intentions clear if you just listen to him either way if you listen to the words you'll know what his the desires are and they use it because wild west days and there's been various forms of that quote in past wild west shows and people that it actually love would have loved to live in those days. So you get to hear quotes like that. Your word is your bond. You know, without your word, you're as good as dead. Your word is the only thing you have on this planet. So when he says, and now come the vaccines and cures long ahead of projections. Now. That means they are being rolled out or have been rolled out almost in the recent present. Me, maybe three or four days ago, and they'll be put out on the market in about another two weeks. That's that's what that and now come or now coming. It is recent this month. This month is happening. That's what that means. But also look into that vaccines and cures long ahead of projection there was never a projection every time Trump talks about anything that's going to happen it's always a money pit type thing so when you think you'll be done with the house in two weeks and everyone starts laughing because they know it's, it's all crap you know they're gonna take their sweet time they're gonna do some tomfoolery they're going to mess up or they just know that it's just not going to be that quick because it's such a large project. 
And when you have, he says vaccines and cures. If you have a cure, there is no need for a vaccine. And since this is a capitalist society, no one cares about the cure. They care about a vaccine. They care about symptom management, not getting rid of it. If you get rid of it, the, then the money dries up. They have to find a way to keep bringing you back. That's why all hospitals now, they are just pill pushers. There's symptom management, not health care. There's a difference. So he says that in the recent present will come a vaccine, which is supposed to help your body fight it off because you get a dead version of it and your body can recognize it. It's not that much of a threat. So when the real one comes, your body can mobilize immediately instead of what is this? And it just goes in and wrecks shop and the body's like, oh, this is very bad for us, but it's too late to act on it. That's the point. And the cure, oh, I got sick. Let me take this. Done. That's it. A vaccine is symptom management. A cure means it's done. It is wiped out. And if you wanted to cure COVID-19, you would have stayed inside, worked from home. The government would have given you the stimulus checks of $5,000 a month because they can easily afford that, especially when you've given them so much of your money as it is. Stay inside two months maximum. Go outside in your yards, wear a mask, wash your hands. Don't interact with others. The mask is not to protect you from it, but protect them from you. Because if you sneeze or call for something, the mask will catch it. If they sneeze or cough without the mask, your mask is only 30% roughly thereof effective. Therefore, because, you know, you've got to breathe, right? And it's going to come through those little holes in your mask or it could get in your eye or get on your skin, or your facial skin, and then you have it. You know, you order things, wipe it down with disinfectants of some kind. Let it sit for, you know, three to nine hours before going and touching it. Make sure you wear gloves when you do. And if you, if you don't want to lose the gloves so fast, wash your gloves like you would your hands. Take them off, you know, dry them best you can. Take them off. Let them dry. Wash your hands anyway. Make sure you dry them. It would have been a lot easier to do this for two straight months and it would have been done. That was the only cure. We still can't do that. Even right now, that would be the cure. So while Donald Trump peddles his crap, and most of these people believe it, you have to wonder what would have been happening to him in the Wild West in a small government type area. You know, where it's supposed to be the sheriff and all that, what they depict on TV and in movies. In that scenario, in that setting, Trump would be dead. He would have promised and promised if he would have been sick and dying. And then they would have seen him saying, uh, starting to pack up and leave. They would have walked him down and killed him. You are not going to leave us here to die while you escape with all of our money. That's what would have happened. We don't live in those days. Instead, we try to vote him out. So we cast our vote for who we want and hope that not only will there not be too much voter suppression, but that those that can vote will vote. And they will vote against Trump, but primarily for something. And that's not what's going to happen because you've still got the Electoral College that's going to put it in favor of whoever's going to save their job or give them the most money. And each person in there, their vote counts for 20, 10 to 20,000 votes. That's a lot of incentive. So just keep in mind, all the Trump supporters, they, in all caps, will 
vote. Everyone else may vote. So that's how you break down a Trump tweet. That's how you understand it. You read it for the words that it is. Compare and contrast. Use your noggin. And you know exactly what his intentions are. And it's just to lie, manipulate, stay in power. Because without that power, then the Wild West will come for him. Not politically and not socially, but lawfully. And that's what he's afraid of. This has been Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.